and uh, I won't really go into any details, so I'll just give a conceptual introduction of what's going on with C groups, what's it good for, and uh, uh, I'm also like to, if you already know about C groups and are using it maybe for some purpose, I'd also like uh, to invite you to a uh, both session that we'll have, uh, have uh, uh, I think, in about two hours. Uh, in Bukura, I think. Uh, so, so if you are more the secret user and would like to share how are you using groups or some interesting uses, you will be very welcome. Uh, I hope someone will come so I won't be there alone. Uh, uh, so, anyway, what's going on with C groups? Uh, what's C groups? Uh, well, um, uh, cgroups is a way to uh, group processes. Of course, the kernel already provides several uh, other ways uh, to group processes. For for example, they are grouped by the, their controlling terminal and by their session and so on. Uh, but uh, well, essentially, cgroups uh, allows uh, grouping processes uh, based on their resource resource usage and controlling their resource usage uh, by uh, grouping them by manually adding adding them uh, to some, uh, some C group. So essentially on the system you can have several C groups or control groups uh, and, uh, and, uh, for, and you can, well of course as a root, you can freely add processes to these C groups and then for each C group you can limit the resources it uses. Uh, that's, that's the main purpose. So uh, the, for example you can have a, a separate uh, C group um, which um, for example, uh, for the programs of the students, and another C group for the programs of the faculty members, and then you can limit the resources used by all processes in the students C group together uh, to some to some value. For example, you can limit the, the memory usage uh, to four gigabytes of memory, and the processor usage to like uh, the, like like uh, two CPUs out of four, and so on. And uh, uh, and the point is that normally you would be able to do this limitation, but only per process. But here you can group multiple processes together, and uh, you can uh, then set a global limit. Uh, and uh, uh, you can also do other uh, do some other things. The most important is maybe maybe accounting. Uh, so you can so, 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 so you can track the resource usage. Uh, the historical resource usage you can and you can also in, in modern kernels you can do things like uh, uh, freeze a C group. MPFS uh, to here, and for each C group uh, hierarchy, for, well, well, for essentially for, for each C group that you want to create, you create you create a subdirectory here, like for example students, and mount a C group file system uh, to this directory. That will create a bunch of files uh, inside, uh, using, uh, and you can use these files to uh, limit the uh, the resource consumption. You can use you can use uh, the file tasks uh, to add uh, to add the uh, processes to there. So you can just use echo to append uh, to, to append another line with PID of a process and so on. And uh, uh, and of course you can create multiple of these C groups. Like like uh, faculty and so on, and and then well, the purpose we use this 
at our um, uh, uh, at our university department, uh, where I ad help administer the, the, the network, is well. It's not for limiting the students' programs, but it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, to limit uh, it's to limit uh, expensive computations because we have quite uh, quite beefy workstations with some i7 processors or bulldozers and so on. Uh, and of course, the primary purpose is for is for people to actually work on the workstations and run their text editors and web browsers, but of course, well, the, uh, most of the CPU power of the workstation isn't really used that way, and uh, we would also like uh, to run on the background some expensive uh, computations for, for uh, some research that is done in the department, but we would like to avoid any interference uh, between these computations and the interactive usage. So we enclose all these uh, expensive computations to a separate C group and, uh, and adjust the memory limits uh, of this C group uh, to some fixed portion of the total memory of the system because the most often, uh, the, the, because the most common way that interference between these computations uh, and interactive usage uh, happens, bearing any nice, nice levels and so on, which are pretty obvious means, is that well, the uh, computation just consumes all the memory and starts uh, and everything starts swapping out and the OOM killer wakes up and starts killing random processes and so on. And uh, that's something that we really don't want. And C groups are a perfect way uh, to limit uh, the memory used by some of all the computations running on the system to some fixed amount so that uh, there is always enough memory for the interactive usage. So that's a tool that's called CompCTL. You can, I guess, Google it, uh, or Google it together with my, na my name or whatever. And uh, it also, I think, contains a pretty good uh, example of very simple C groups usage. And yeah, yeah. Uh, some of the advanced features of C groups are also used in the modern Linux containers, LXC. Uh, yeah, how to write? Oh. LXC, uh, which is a um, way to, uh, to, to create a separate, well, containers which use a completely separate namespaces uh, for, uh, to, uh, and, and using them you, you, you can basically make several isolated containers on a single, single host without use of, uh, explicit, of explicit virtualization, uh, but you essentially have several completely separate user spaces which just share a common kernel. And uh, this uses a bunch of tricks like separate namespaces and so on, but, one, uh, but it also uses, uh, uses uh, C groups uh, for, for some of the resource limitations and also for the freeze and so fun functionality. So that's all I know about C groups and I guess that's it. <laughs> so I hope that this has been useful as some brief introduction to the subject. Questions, additions? Yeah, yeah, especially additions because I'm sure I missed a lot of things or maybe even said something wrong. I don't know. Maybe one usage is the tracking processes, for example, in init. Uh, the old inits uh, have used uh, tracking by PIDs or something like that. Mm -hmm. And now, for example, systemd is tracking processes through their C, C groups. So, for example, when we kill systems to stop uh, some service, it will, call, it will kill all of its ascendants. Yeah, of course, if you have a process which is in a C group and that process creates a new process, then that, that new process will also stay in the C group until you explicitly perhaps assign it to a different C group. So yeah, yeah, you can track, uh, track process higher, sub hierarchies using, using this. Yeah, that, that's, that's great addition, yeah. Can you also use net, um, C groups for managing network resources, like limiting network usage? Hmm, I don't know. Does anyone else know? Yeah, I think I've seen some work in this direction, but yeah, I'm not sure if it's already finished. But this, this uh, C groups 